Welcome to Project Time with Preston. Today I have part two in my series on these LED panel lights. Today is going to be a fairly straightforward installation in a drop ceiling. I'm replacing an existing standard light fixture with just a regular light bulb. So I'm not going to be doing anything with dimming. I'm not going to be installing any new wiring because I'm going to use the old existing wiring and just attach it to this panel. So let's get started. To work on this light, I'm going to, of course, have to switch it off. This is on a three-way switch, which means there are two different switches that control this light. So just in case somebody else decides they want to come downstairs and out of habit tries to flip on the light switch, I'm going to put some tape over the upstairs light switch to make sure nobody flips it while I'm working on it. And there we go. Hopefully just that little bit of masking tape will be enough to stop anybody from flipping that light switch. Now that I'm sure nobody else is going to flip off the switch, we start by removing the light bulb. That's easy. And unscrew the fixture. This particular fixture, it looks like I just loosen it a bit and turn it and then it comes down and it's just on here with electrical tape. That's covering it because there's no box up there. This was probably installed by the previous homeowner and they did a lousy job. So, fortunately, I don't need an electrical box for the new lights because the new lights have a metal box built into them for the wires. So, just unscrew that a little bit, bend the wire a little bit so I can get it off the screw. There. There we go. Just to be on the safe side, just remove this old dried out electrical tape. Bend these wires straight. Probably end up clipping these off as stripping some fresh wire, or at least making those a little shorter, because that's awfully long. But just for a little protection until I'm done, I'm going to put those wire clips on. And now, let's take this panel off. Let's see what's up there. Now I'm afraid there's going to be mouse dropping, certainly a lot of dust, who knows what. But we all have face masks, so I'm going to wear a face mask. And uh, wiggle that a little bit. There are wires on the two sides here holding it up, so if I can scoot this back. Now the good thing is, I don't actually need this panel anymore to have a hole in it. I can push these up and get them out of the way. So I don't want those to, I want those to end up staying here. Oh, there we go. Woo! Yuck. So, yeah, there are some mouse droppings. There are two screws that were holding the fixture on. There's supposed to be a plastic or metal junction box, but instead they just took two pieces of wood so that they could screw into something and have that fixture hold in place. Not a good design, 
but it did the trick. Uh, certainly not up to code, and I'm glad it's going to be better now. Brush off the dust I see here. Push this insulation back up a little bit. It's supposed to be up and out of the way. Ooh, lots of dust along the edge here. Other gunk. To vacuum all this up. Now, as I showed in my last video, we need to run the wires through this little panel into the box that holds them for the light. I'm going to use a pair of pliers and bend that. You can see it bends right out. It's only attached on one little side. I'll just bend it a couple of times and it disconnects. And now I can run the wires through here. Pay attention, it's bent in a way that could imply it goes the other way. You have to look carefully to see the screw goes in this way. So the wires go through the hole. And like that. So now I've got these wires hanging down. Unfortunately, there's no ground. Actually, there is. It's just way up here where you can barely see it because... It wasn't needed with the plastic fixture, so whoever installed it just cut it off instead of leaving it there for us to work with. But there's plenty of wire here, so when I put it in, it's going to be uh, over here-ish, or over here-ish. I should check. It's going to be, that goes, it's going to be right about here, or... If I put it this way, it'll be right about here. This will be the better place to put that. And since the wire's coming in right here, there's plenty of wire. I can just cut this off here and here. That'll make... And then I need to cut back the insulation a good bit. This will, once this starts ripping on the insulation, hopefully I can just tear it. I am not really all that experienced at doing the Romex. This is the household wiring. We call it Romex because that was the original brand. And I need to rip off enough of this. I have plenty of access to the wire. A real electrician would do this in five seconds with the right tools. I take a little longer, but I get the job done. There we go. Now we actually have some wires here with the ground. And I just need to strip off the ends of these. Before we can run the wires through the hole here, we have to have something so that they're not just dangling out of the hole. I believe the electrical code requires that the cable be secured within 8 inches of the box, which this one clearly isn't, or has to be clamped as it goes into the box. So I have this little clamp attachment that then fits onto here that will uh, secure this. So to, we want to run the wires through here and 
and we want at least an inch of insulation past the clamp so it's in the box and then we just screw the clamp down secure and tight so the wire the wire gets pulled on it's pulling on the whole box and the wire itself won't pull out because what you absolutely do not want is these conductors if they get loose inside the box somehow of getting pulled out because somebody else is doing something up here and accidentally yanks on the wire and then having live conductors around uh, outside of the electrical box. So now that that is on, it's going to go th in through here. There's a little ring on this we take off. This is going to go in like that. This goes on to the clamp. You see there's a little bit of extra space. I think this is the right size clamp. The actual diameter on this is seven eighths of an inch. But when they talk about the, the punch outs, they talk about the size of conduit that you would run through there. So I think this is a half inch uh, punch out, even though the diameter is seven eighths of an inch. And this is a half inch clamp. And I'm going to screw that ring on. It will be tight, and that's the important thing. There, that's really secure. This wire isn't going anywhere. It's really solidly into the box. You got an inch of insulation before you get the loose conductors. And if we ever need to, we can adjust it and get more wire in there. Now that we have the wires ready, we've got the LED panel white with the two conductors plus the ground. And I've got wire nuts in my pocket. So let's connect these up. Let's see. We want to do ground first. So it's a good idea. Do not fall off your ladder. This is where it would be nice to have an extra hand. I do not have enough hands for this. Fortunately, the light itself is super, super light. Not heavy at all. That's getting on with a very good solid grip. That is not coming off. And let's put on neutral. That's the white wire. And then black is the hot. There. Now I just neatly tuck these into the metal box here. And notice there uh, are also, oh, that goes the other way. Notice we've also got the, the gray and purple wires for dimming. We're not using those, just leave them alone. When they're disconnected, that means you get zero volts on the control signal, which means full brightness. The more power on the dimmer control, the less brightness you get. And this is a little hard to work with because there's not a lot of space for the wires in there. One, ah. Uh. This is definitely difficult to work with. But these get closed. And we just have to put the screw in. Oh, now we have a slight problem. The screw from the clamp is going right over the hole where the screw goes 
to secure this in. That is most unfortunate. I'm going to have to loosen this clamp a little bit. Turn it. Oh, I can probably just turn it. Now it will fit. And now I can see where the screw goes there. There. All secure. My light is wired. In theory, I can turn it on. I'll do that before. Yes. Now I know it's wired. And I just have to push it in kind of diagonally here. Get it up. into the space, straighten it out, move it again, lift up the other tile so we can get that in, and then go get a tile down flat, and there we go. And now we have more light than this room has ever seen before. Thank you, and if you found this interesting, you can come back for the next part of this where I will install two of these to replace a single long fluorescent fixture and hopefully set up the dimming if I can manage to run the wires to this switch.